Aha, got you. Just as I thought, my ears never mistake the sound of an intruder's footsteps, even those of a young lady like yourself. Oh, so you thought you'd just come waltzing right in, did you? No one seems to own these gardens, therefore, they're free for the taking. Free to use as you please, and everyone else be damned. Well, I'm afraid you've made a terrible mistake, my dear. Not a leaf falls, nor a blade of grass bends in my garden without me knowing about it. Do you really expect me to believe that? How do I know you're not just another fool aiming to turn this blessed land into a house of revelry? You'd think the tales of all those lost to these woods before them would be enough to ward them off. But danger has the voice of a siren. They just can't resist her call. And nor can you, it seems. You just couldn't resist the chance to come out here, away from prying eyes, and make a little mischief, could you? A likely story, and I suppose that little bag of yours is full of gardening tools, instead of that bottled swill your kind is so fond of. Hmm? A trowel. Gloves, fork, pruners, winger. Well, not be damned. What's this? A rose grow? By my scarlet haw. Then it is you. You're the one who's been tending my roses. Did you also plant the new ones over there? I see. Perhaps I shouldn't have been so quick to assume the worst. I suppose we're even then. True, you shouldn't have been trespassing. But you've done me a great kindness by helping me take care of this place. Especially as far as my roses are concerned. Would you look at that? You even took care to prune the canes before you put them in. I'm impressed. No, now. Don't go tearing up on me, miss. Perhaps we can start over. What's your name? Hmm. A beautiful name, if I ever heard one. As bold and bright as the call of a song thrush. Oh, me? You can call me Farron. A pleasure to meet you. Yes, these gardens are mine. This land has belonged to my family since the dawn of time, or so it feels. I confess, though, it is a bit hard to maintain. With all my other responsibilities, I hardly even have time to tend the roses anymore. I'm fortunate that they're a hearty variety. It is a generous offer, my dear. I'd fain have the help of someone as skilled as you. What would you ask in return? Nothing. <laughs> Playing the modest mouse, are we? Come now, what would you have from me? You truly need no payment. Well then, if you speak true, I'll gladly accept. I'd be mad to turn down a lovely soul like you, after all. Most of the time my visitors are like apples rotten at the heart. I'd almost given up hope of seeing anyone treat this place with an ounce of respect until you came along, caring this much for a patch of land not your own, expecting nothing in return. You've a good heart, my dear. Tell me, what brings you out into these woods? Doesn't the reputation give you pause? Ah, you're a brave one then. Either brave or foolish. <laughs> True. Some might say they're one and the same. And what would you say? Interesting. Sounds as though you speak from experience. Ah, I'm very sorry, my dear. Your brother, you said? I see. He was last seen in these woods? A whole year. That explains the air of melancholy about you. A terrible thing, that one so sweet should be cursed with such great sorrow. Loss is a pain that never truly leaves you, does it? Like a thorn in the flesh, which heals over before you have a chance to pluck it out. 
I can only imagine. I suppose I can't fault you for wanting to be close to him. You'd best be careful, though, my dear. If the rumors are true, the fair folk are alive and well in these woods. You don't think they might try and snatch you up? You never know. Their laws are different from ours, after all. Just because you can't think of any reason they'd want you, that doesn't mean there wouldn't be one. We all have things we want. Things we'd give anything to have. Things we'd break all our laws for, each and every one, if it meant we could have our heart's desire. Oh, don't mind me. Pray forgive my ramblings. You stay out here too long, you would swear even the trees themselves start talking to you. Now, before you head out on your way, let me give you something. Uh-uh-uh. I'll not let you walk out of here empty-handed. Take one of my roses with you. Perhaps you can grow cutting from it? Ah, no, please, don't thank me. Tis the least I can do. <laughs> I can't imagine you would have. They're my very own secret variety, you see. Hardy enough to last through all the seasons. Blooms that never fade. And a fragrance sweet enough to make the head spin. Go on. Try it. Mmm. Lovely, isn't it? Still, its beauty pales in comparison to yours, my flower. Hmm. What's the matter, my dear? Feeling dizzy, are we? <laughs> Let me guess. You feel a warm, tingling sensation spreading through your body. Your mind is growing hazy. Your thoughts slowing to a crawl. Your eyes are getting heavier with each passing moment as sleep descends on you like a fog. Ah, there we go. You see it now, don't you? No, my dear. It's not your dreams taking hold. At least, not yet. It's merely the veil starting to lift. Now that you're in my power, you're starting to see what I see. You can see things as they truly are. Both my garden and me. I think you already know my flower. Or perhaps the question you're looking for is not who I am, but what. <laughs> That's right. A word of advice. Don't be so hasty in giving out your name to strangers. You never know what they might do with it. No, my dear. I don't think I shall. On the contrary, you'll be coming with me. I've waited eons for someone like you, a mortal with your beauty and gentleness, your reverence for the natural world. I'd be a fool to let you go. <laughs> Impressive that you're still awake. Please, by all means, keep trying to resist, my dear. Tis quite amusing. In the end, though, I'm afraid you'll find tis a fruitless battle. No mortal mind can resist my enchantments for long. Already, your eyes are closing like a morning glory at afternoon's end. You needn't be afraid. I assure you, you'll have nothing but sweet dreams in store for you. Now, surrender your cares and let golden sleep reign. Just sleep, my flower. Sleep. Sleep, sleep, I shall see you when you wake. Good morrow, my flower. It's good to see you up and about. How are you faring? <laughs> Tis understandable. Passing through the veil for the first time often tends to muddle the mind, especially for a mortal such as yourself. You needn't worry. 
Your wits shall fully return to you in time. Won't you join me for tea? You must be hungry. It is impossible for your kind to go without sustenance for long, after all. Why so hesitant, my flower? What, do you think me a spider? Lying in wait until my prey steps close enough to strike? Fear not, my dear. I don't bite. At least, not in this form. Come now. If this is an act of defiance, there's little sense in it. Join me, and perhaps I can answer some of those questions that are clamoring within you like wretched Sunday bells. Be not afeard. This is not Hades. Eating from my table will not doom you to eternity in my realm. There. Tis good to see your common sense prevail. Have whatever you like. If nothing appeals to you, just say the word, and I shall send for something else. What do they call me? An apt question indeed. They call me Farron. I am the head of the Middle Mist Court. In human terms, you may call me a prince. And, to answer what would doubtlessly be your next question, we are at my manor, in my realm. Look out those windows. Yes, go on. Peer through the glass. Can you see it? Yes. Tis the very same rose garden where we met yesterday. Not quite. You wouldn't be transported here simply by stepping inside, if that's what you're thinking. After all, you visited the garden quite a few times yourself without leaving the mortal realm, did you not? No. Tis more akin to a snare than a portal. Sometimes humans are lucky enough to slip in and out unnoticed. But when they have the misfortune to trip the snare, or else alert the hunter, then, <laughs> before they know it, they've fallen through the crack into the curtain, only to awaken here. So quick do bright things come to confusion. Ah, now you, you are different, my dear. Rarely do I cross into the mortal realm, but I needed to see for myself whether you truly were what you seemed, before any magic took hold. I'd noticed the changes to my garden, you see. Changes stemming from the other side. Suddenly the weeds were fewer. The soil was treated. Spent blooms were removed. New rose bushes appeared, young and proud. A mortal variety. I hardly dared to let myself believe that a mortal might be caring for my garden. You can only imagine my joy when I found that it was true. Most humans that we catch these days are not but sanctimonious pirates, focused only on subjugating the land and its kin. But you, my flower, you are not a pirate, but a steward. One willing to give, to care for the earth, instead of merely taking. As soon as you proved your intentions to me back in the garden, I knew I'd found the one worthy to stand beside me for all eternity. Yes, my dear, I speak of marriage. I wish for you to be my bride. You will be my consort, my confidant, my lover, or, if you prefer your human terms, my princess. Hmm? Oh, on the contrary, my dear, you being human is a boon. While we fake can marry amongst our own kind, politics get rather messy. Occasionally, the unrest created by the shifting hierarchies have been known to destroy entire courts. But, with the mortal bride, there is no such risk. You have nothing to fear from my kin. I promise, they shall accept you. And if they don't, they shall answer to me. <laughs> if you were a fae, this would all be part of the normal courting games. But something tells me you are quite serious. Amusing that you think you can simply refuse. But you're forgetting something, my dear. I hold your name. Meaning that, until I release you, you are in my power. Hmm? I'm wrong? Am I? Why, pray tell. So it was only your nickname that you gave me? 
<laughs> ah, very clever indeed. True, a nickname has but a fraction of a given name's power. However, my dear, there is one other thing to consider, if you recall back in the garden. You offered yourself to me. Oh, but you did. You offered to help me, did you not? Perhaps, but what were your exact words? If you want, I'd be happy to help you. You never specified just what you were offering to help with. And what I need help with is really middle mist. After all, should I have not but empty air in the seat beside me as I sit on my throne? Should I be forced to govern with the whispers of the wind as my sole advisor? No. I need someone to rule by my side. I need you, my flower. <laughs> A brave attempt. Tis true. According to our laws, you can't get something for nothing. However, you already told me that you needed nothing in return. Don't you remember? You willingly gave up the chance to receive payment. Meaning you can demand nothing from me, my dear. Look at you. I can practically hear your mind scrambling, like a trapped rabbit, clawing desperately for a way out. You are clever, my dear, astonishingly so, for a mortal. But you will not be able to outsmart me, albeit unintentionally. You offered yourself to me, and I accepted. The bargain is struck. And it cannot be undone. <sighs> Put it down, my dear. Even if that butter knife could hurt me, I must warn you. My kin and I do not look kindly upon such violent displays. Put it down. Now. I would also advise you to hold your tongue. Such words are more fitting for a viper than my future bride. Tis a dangerous game indeed. To insult a fae, let alone one of my status. Oh no, my flower, tis not you I will punish. Rather, it will be another who bears the consequences. Someone very precious to you. Someone who you had once thought was lost for good. That's right. You weren't the only one to wander into my garden, my dear. Your miscreant of a brother came first along with his witless friends. Unlike you, they decided to treat my garden as a tavern, carousing till dawn, tearing up my precious roses with the reverie. For his crimes, I bestowed upon him the ultimate sentence. He now sits in my prison, awaiting his execution. And why shouldn't I, pray tell? He bit his thumb at what we hold sacred. His debt cannot be repaid. Unless, of course, someone else were to pay it for him. That's right. If you win me, I might find it in my heart to have mercy. You promise your life to me, and his life will be spared. That seems fair, does it not? Tis long past the time for games, my dear. Either way, you shall be mine. But if you give yourself to me willingly... Then your brother will live. What will you choose? I am many things, my dear, but I am not a liar. Tis both the blessing and the curse of a fay. We cannot lie. Should we try, our voices fail us. Nor do my words hide a trap. I swear on my first bloom, I will send him back to the mortal realm, alive and well. If you agree to my bargain. Now, tis time, my flower. Do you truly love your brother as you claim? Make your choice. Yet again, I am glad to see your sense prevails. Give me your hand. Ah, your flesh is as soft as a petal on my lips. Fear not, my flower. Our life together will be a happy one, I promise you. I shall ensure you are satisfied. Mind, body, and soul. Now, let's raise our glass to our engagement, to our union, and to you, my flower. 
my own beautiful rose. Good day, my flower, my one and only rose. Well, no words of welcome for your beloved. Not even a glance to spare for the one who, by day's end, will be your husband. One might confuse you for one of the statues in my garden. Come, now, my dear, you must restrain yourself. Such ardent display should be saved for our wedding night, should they not? <laughs> ah, that February face, so full of frost. Tis a good thing I am made of stronger stuff, for if I were a plant, such a look would make me wither where I stand. But, while I admire a flower that does not immediately bow to the wind, only a fool continues to fight a losing battle, my dear. Twas a brave final attempt, I admit, setting me a quest so long and arduous, that I might not return before our wedding day. But, despite your best efforts, my flower, I have returned, my brow bound with a victorious wreath. Tis time you accepted your fate. Hmm? True. Tis a break from tradition to lay eyes upon you before the ceremony. However, any ill luck I might invite by doing so, I would experience a hundred times over just for the chance to see your face. You are as radiant as the sun itself. You will be the envy of all at the ceremony, and I, for being able to call you my own. You still doubt me, my flower? As I promised, once your brother's debt is paid, he goes free. A plague o'er me and my house, should I not keep my word. Now, tis nearly time. I shall leave you to allow you to make your final preparations. Farewell, then, my beautiful rose. I shall see you beneath the arch. Welcome, dear friends. Today we gather to celebrate the union between Prince Feyren, head of our beloved Middlemist court, and his chosen. Before they are made handfast, let them now, in accordance with tradition, present one another with the results of their quests as proof of their devotion to one another. My lord, let thee be first. What hast thou secured for your beloved? As you requested, my one and only rose, I have brought you an item of legend, one sought by many, but which few have ever laid eyes upon, be they fay or mortal. I traversed realm after realm, through flood and fire, to obtain for you what you desired. Behold, a mantle of invisibility. They say it graced the shoulders of the once and future king himself. And now, tis yours, my flower. Take it as a proof of my love. Well, why don't you see for yourself? Go on, try it. What did I tell you? I'm glad to see you like it. <laughs> or not see, I suppose. And now, my lady, let thee reciprocate. What hast thou secured for your beloved in turn? There was only one thing I desired from you, my flower. Do you remember? That's right. From you, I wish only for a smile. After all, your happiness is my own. Well? <laughs> Perhaps you are smiling, but tis useless if I cannot see it. Remove the cloak, my dear, and let me see your lovely face. I beg your pardon? Another of your little games, hmm? Come now. As much as I enjoy your wit, tis hardly the time. Our friends wait upon us. Remove the cloak, and let us continue the ceremony. No. Ah. Uh, of course. I see how it is. Leave it to you to find a final way to spite me. In front of all our guests, no less. Clever, my dear. Very clever. However, I grow tired of your jests. Remove the cloak at once, before you make me truly angry. You dare refuse your prince. I shan't tell you again. Show your face. What? Nonsense. 
Do you intend to stay invisible forever? What king ever had an invisible queen? Think back to my words. What do you... No, not but empty air in the seat beside me. The whispers of the wind as my sole advisor. No, tis madness. You cannot stay under the cloak for eternity. <sighs> Where are you? Get over here, you saucy minion. You cannot deprive me of seeing you, nor hearing you. I won't have it. If I want you, I shall take you as you are? You little viper. We had a bargain. Oh, really? I only said that you had to give yourself to me. I never specified any further? <laughs> so that's it, is it? Trying to give me a taste of my own medicine? Or are you truly that desperate to get away from me? But think carefully, my flower. Think very carefully. Remember, it is not merely you that our bargain affects. If I should release you, you know what will happen to your brother. Do you still wish to tread that path? <laughs> Very well. If you want so badly to be free, my thorn-stemmed rose, then so be it. Let all the friends gathered here bear witness. I hereby revoke the marriage contract between myself and my chosen. As of this moment, she is free. There will be no wedding today. But do not think yourselves robbed of a spectacle. Instead of a marriage, we shall have an execution. Yes. Bring the human prisoner here and let him be executed at once. <gasps> Silent, my flower. Tis time to reap what you have sown. Without your hand as payment, your brother's debt still stands. Now, he will pay for your selfishness with his life. Oh, what makes you think you have any right to object? You claim him. On what grounds? Ha, huh, we've already been over this, my dear. You cannot claim him as a reward for caring for my garden. You already said you didn't need anything in return. What? He's not a thing, but a person. Wait, no, no. No, this cannot be. You think a mere twist of my words will be enough to wrench yourselves from my grasp? You cannot escape me that easily. What? Damn our laws. Perhaps they do say you can't get something for nothing. But I am the prince. Who's to say I cannot break them if I choose? Who would dare to challenge me? What consequences could I possibly face? I said, what? A, a plague over me and my house? If I do not keep my word? No, no, you can't. I... <laughs> well played, my dear. Very well played indeed. It would seem in this particular battle of wits. You are the victor. Then, let it be so. Take your fool of a brother and be gone from here. But, before you take your leave, pray. Let me gaze upon you one last time. I would fain see the face of the one who bested me. Ah, my flower. You truly are like a rose. As deadly sharp as you are beautiful. I have been fortunate indeed to be pierced by your thorns. Your face shall forever be noted in my book of memory. Now, take your brother and get thee gone. Adieu, my dear. And be vigilant, I beseech you. For should we ever meet again, rest assured, it will not be you who is victorious. <laughs>